All right, in this video, we're going to be reviewing Fisher projections. I'm going to show you how to draw them, how to test for an anti-mirrorism, and how to assign RNS configurations. So what is a Fisher projection? Well, it's an easy way to view the stereochemistry of a compound, and it's most useful when the compound has two or more asymmetrical carbons. So first, we're going to look at how to draw a Fisher projection. We'll start with the named compound, S-lactic acid. This molecule has a three carbon chain with an asymmetric carbon in the center. Using this knowledge, we'll draw a perspective drawing that looks something like this. When we convert to Fisher projection, the first thing we want to do is label our carbon chain, like so. We want to make sure to follow IUPAC numbering, which means our most oxidized carbon is carbon number one. Look for the carbon with the most amount of oxygen bonds or halogen bonds to determine this. Next, we'll orientate ourselves such that our carbon chain is vertical to us and projecting away, and the other substituents are horizontal, like so. Make sure carbon 1 is at the top of our new projection. As you can tell, our carbon chain is vertical and pointing away from us, as denoted by dashed lines, and our horizontal bonds are pointing towards us, denoted by wedged bonds. Notice how the wedged horizontal bonds that point towards us sort of look like a bow tie. This should illustrate why this projection is sometimes called a bow tie convention. From here, all we need to do is replace the wedges and dashes with a line and remove any central carbon atoms, which will be represented by the intersection between the lines, and our Fisher projection is finished. So you might be wondering if we always need to keep our carbon one on top of the projection. Well, we have a rule for this. This rule allows us to rotate our Fisher projection and end up with the same molecule. We'll take our S-lactic acid projection from earlier and we'll convert it back to the dash wedge symbols. As we know, these are the same molecules. And notice how our wedges are horizontal and dashes are vertical. Now we'll apply a 180 degree turn to our projection, which will end up something like this. Looking closely, this is the same molecule. Our wedges are still horizontal and our dashes are still vertical. Thus, when we convert this dash wedge model back into a Fisher projection, we end up with the exact same molecule. Now, while we can rotate our projection by 180 degrees and still come out with the same molecule, what happens when we rotate our projection by 90 degrees? Well, we'll go back to the dash wedge model and again, take note of the positions. We'll apply a 90 degree rotation to this molecule. Now our dashes end up placed horizontally and our wedges vertically. This is not a legal Fisher projection. When you do 90 degree rotation to a Fisher project, you end up with an enantiomer of the original molecule. They are not the same, so don't do that. Remember, rotation by 180 is fine, but 90 isn't. Now we'll look at drawing mirror images of Fisher projections. We would want to draw a mirror image when we are testing for an antimerism. If the projection is properly drawn with the carbon chain along the vertical and the mirror image can't be made to look the same as the original through 180 degree rotation, Mirror images are enantiomers that carbon is chiral. So how does one draw the mirror image of a Fisher projection? In perspective drawings, the rule was to reverse left and right while leaving the other directions the same. This is true for Fisher projections as well. We'll interchange the groups on the horizontal parts of the crosses, which reverses left and right, while leaving the other directions unchanged. That will leave us with a molecule looking something like this. We'll show this starting with the molecule propan tool. First, We'll draw the Fisher projection of the molecule. Next, we'll reverse the projection by switching the substituents that are horizontal to each other, while leaving the top and bottom the same. We now have our mirror projection. To test for an enantiomerism, we will rotate this molecule by 180 degrees. Because the rotation leaves us with the same projection as our original molecule, we can say that propan tool is achiral. Next, we'll show another example using propane 1,2-diol. First off, we'll draw the Fisher projection, like so. Next, we'll find the mirror image of it by reversing the left and right. It's not the same projection, so we'll rotate it by 180 degrees. And looking at our new projection, it is not the same as our original. So our mirrored image is an enantiomer of our original. This means the carbon is chiral. Just so happens that our original molecule actually has the R configuration, making the original molecule an R propane 1,2-diol. Now we know how to determine if a molecule is an enantiomer, 
but now we need to find out how to assign the configuration for a carbon atom using a Fisher projection. Luckily, we can do this easily. Remember the two rules for assigning RNS. First, you need to assign priorities to the groups bonded to the asymmetric carbon atom, usually via molecular weight. Second, place the lowest priority group in the back, which is usually a hydrogen atom, and draw an arrow from group 1 to 2 to 3. Clockwise is R, and counterclockwise is S. Knowing these rules, let's take a look at an antimer of glyceraldehyde. We'll start by taking this Fisher projection and labeling each group's priorities. First off, we have a single hydrogen group. So because it's the lightest, it becomes our lowest priority group. We'll label it for. The OH group is the highest priority because of the heavy oxygen bond connected to our carbon atom. So we'll label that as one. Now we need to decide if the CHO group or the CH2OH group is heavier. If we only looked at the bonds directly connected to our asymmetrical carbon, we would not be able to determine the priorities. So we'll look at the bonds connected to the carbons of each group. The carbon in our CHO group has two bonds to oxygen and one bond to hydrogen. The carbon in our CH2OH group has one bond to oxygen and two bonds to hydrogen. We can say that the CHO carbon has a higher priority than CH2OH because two bonds to oxygen is heavier than one bond to oxygen. We'll label CHO with two and CH2OH with three. Now that we have our priorities for each group, we'll go ahead and turn the Fisher projection into a wedge dash model. Because the hydrogen is our lowest priority, we need to place it in the back of our perspective drawing. So we'll draw the perspective model like so. Now taking a look at our priorities, we can determine that our one, two, three order proceeds clockwise. So this enantiomer of glyceraldehyde is in an R configuration. But what's good about the Fisher projection is that we don't need to actually draw a perspective model to determine configuration. We only need to look at the assigned priorities on the Fisher projection itself. So in the same glyceraldehyde molecule, we'll have the assigned priorities to each of the groups. If we ignore the lowest priority group, in this case it is hydrogen, we can see that our priorities proceed in a counterclockwise direction. While this would imply an S configuration in a perspective drawing, that is not the case here. To get a correct configuration in a Fisher projection, all you have to do is remember that a Fisher projection assigns R and S opposite to a perspective drawing. That is, in a Fisher projection, a clockwise formation gives an S configuration and a counterclockwise formation gives an R configuration. Don't get confused between the two. And if you're worried about messing up the configuration, just draw out the perspective drawing. This molecule, again, is our configuration as we determined from the glyceraldehyde Fisher projection. So in summary, Fisher projections are pretty useful. They're really useful for naming compounds with two or more asymmetric carbon atoms. You'll always find asymmetric carbons at the center of crosses. Remember that vertical lines project away from the viewer and horizontal lines towards, which is how we get the bow tie name. The carbon chain is always placed along the vertical with the IUPAC numbering going from top to bottom. Make sure that your lowest numbered carbon is the most oxidized end and make sure it's placed at the top. Remember that the entire projection can be rotated 180 degrees in the plane of the paper without ever changing its stereochemistry, but you can't rotate it 90 degrees. And if you want to find the mirror image, you interchange the two groups on the asymmetric carbon horizontally. That inverts its stereochemistry and lets you find mirror images. So thanks for watching. Good luck with your future chemistry.